Hey everybody, it's Marcus. I want to do a quick video today that people have been asking me about um, since they know I own the Nikon stuff and the Canon stuff. So um, I'm going to go the high end of, uh, of what we have available right now. The R5 is not out yet, so I'm just going to go um, Z7 and uh, EOS R and uh, see what the dynamic range difference is, if anything at all. Um, there is a little bit, but uh, it's not as much as you'd probably think. So let's check it out. Please go to ProPhotoEdits.com where you can download my Lightroom presets and Photoshop actions. I have the 105 on the Z7 and I'll give you these raw files in the description and then I have the 85 RF on the EOS R. So let's hop into these files. Okay, so let's check out some dynamic range colors and stuff like that, but mostly on the dynamic range for this because that's what a lot of people's pet peeves, misconceptions, and uh, a little bit of the truth on um, the EOS R that it's not all the way up to uh, par as far as the Z7, which is one of the best sensors I've ever touched dynamic range wise. But um, let's check out some of these. And I'm going to edit these basically like I do for portraits. This isn't going to be like landscape shooting totally overexposed, totally underexposed, and trying to bring back a bunch of um, details because I never really do that. I don't purposely blow shots and if I blow a shot that bad I'm not going to use it anyway. So this is just basically gonna, basically going to be if you're shooting you know like a regular portrait photographer would and I'll show you that um, I'm just using my presets on here that uh, ProPhotoEdits.com but let's go here and reset this and I'll show you what it looked like out of camera. So this for me is um, I wouldn't say underexposed uh, not as much as I shoot some other times, but this is just her in the shade on a very um, sunny day And you can tell that um, it's really flat just like most raw files are um, The hair is is pretty black and you can see the scope up here where the blacks are almost to the top So, you know, that's a little bit of the uh, underexposed area and then over here um, Nothing's really overexposed. So I try to never ever ever overexpose at any any means so here we go and let's put the um, preset back on there and you can see right here that um, I didn't mess with the exposure too much but I pulled the highlights all the way down the shadows all the way up I'm pushing this about as extreme as I can push it and then messing with the uh, calibration down here I just wanted to match these files to show you that it's possible to match these pretty much identically so if we look up here at the hair and we'll compare these the dynamic range um, is good for portraits on the on the EOSR. There's nothing there's nothing really wonky about it that I found. What I will show you in a second with the Z7 files is more um, in the highlights. Um, you lose a little bit of just the um, the actual tonality inside the highlights on the EOSR that I found um, compared to the uh, Z7. So let's jump into the um, 105 on the uh, Z7 file here. And I'll show you what this looked like straight out of camera. And you can tell I shot it almost identically the same. And then um, I'll go ahead and put um, pretty much the identical uh, preset on there. And I just had to tweak the white balance because both these cameras measure that a little bit different. So let's grab both of these and let's um, compare them both. Now you can see that um, on the Canon, maybe you can see this. If not, just have a play with the files. As a portrait shooter, I don't think either one of these will sway me one way or the other file-wise as far as, you know, just first glance, um, dynamic range-wise. We can zoom in here and look around, and both these files have been pushed really hard as far as shadows, blacks, whites, highlights, um, the same exact way, and most importantly, just because you want as apples to apples you can get. This is uh, Nikon's um, best lens in my opinion over here and this is Canon's even newer best lens the RF 1.2 this is the 105 1.4 um, I'll show some different files in a minute because you can see that it I'm a little bit further back on this file but it missed auto focus on the eye just a touch but um, this is an incredibly sharp lens and I'll show you that in a second but this isn't really about the lenses see how well I match these files um, the only thing I would say is that the highlight roll off on a lot of the Canon files that you'll see, and it's not really the roll off. I don't know if it just doesn't have the the same dynamic range in the highlights. You'll see that they're peaking a little bit earlier, and they're a little bit sharper, and it looks like they're, they're lacking a little bit of the, um, the collar. They're going a little bit flat inside the collar there on the, uh, on the highlights. So let's go on to these next files here. Canon EOS R here on the right. This is the Z7 and the 105 1.4e. 
and this is the RF, or sorry, this is the EF 1.2, so it won't be quite as sharp. I have both lenses with me on this day, but um, this is more about the sensors, and I'll just show you that um, when you hit focus with the 105, that bad boy is sharp, and uh, I'll give you these files so you can check them out. Um, but you can see again, matching these up as close as I can, the highlights here on the EOS R, and this is really nitpicking, um, they're starting to lose just a little bit of color. They're starting to break apart just a touch. And of course, there's a difference in megapixels here by about, you know, 12 or 13, I think. But um, the EOS R is holding up pretty well. If I just look at both of these files, I would say that this file's colors and just overall the blacks you can see down here, they look a little bit, you know, round and, and warm to me. And that's a dynamic range issue, I think. You know, just from shooting Nikon from so long, this is one of the things I love about it. It's just a warm, kind of an organic look. And the Canon colors are perfect. Everything is great with it. I think that the blacks and the uh, the extreme darks and the extreme, um, the brightest parts of the image just don't have the range and the color depth as the Nikon do. And this is like the best sensor I've ever touched, the Z7 DA50 sensor. So that's saying a lot that this can keep up with that. So let's check this out just to give it more of an apples to apples. This is modern optics. This is the RF 85 lens, the non-DS version on the OSR. And on this side, we have the 105, same file on the Z7. And um, this will just be better because this is more of a contrasty lens. So it'll be more of a, a modern day look. And we can see here that even with that, it's really close. It's even out a little bit, but you can see that the highlight roll off here. And I don't want to say just roll off, it's more of a dynamic range issue, I would say. is um, really pleasing and nice and soft and gentle here on the Z7. And you're running out of uh, up top DR here on the EOS R. And uh, that's to be expected. I mean, Canon's always fell behind a little bit. Um, but uh, I've been pushing these files quite hard here. And um, just the way I'd normally edit. And uh, you just see you have to change the way you work a little bit from camera to camera. It's just how it is. But uh, if you look at these files side by side from further away, you can see that um, you have a little bit more of a job to do on the OSR dynamic range touch up wise. And uh, on the Z7, it's a little bit easier to edit. I couldn't have really exposed this any differently, honestly. Um, this is just natural light daytime stuff, so it's super bright. I shot it just about to the limit of where I feel comfortable on the EOS R. But the hair, is, she has black hair, so this is a good test on there. And um, I shot it about as deep as I could get it. And the highlights are, I wouldn't want to shoot them any brighter than that, honestly, because of what you have to do in post. So then once you, um, once you push it a little bit, you can see the colors are lovely and everything, but you start to see a little bit of that um, just not beautiful top end that you can fix in post if you want to um, in Photoshop. And then you could see that the blacks there just um, aren't the same as on the, uh, the Nikon file that I'll show you here. Definitely a, a, a better rounded file. And um, that Z7 sensor is a beast, but hopefully on the R5, um, they'll step it up a bit because the optics there on the uh, on the uh, RF lenses are really great, and Nikon really doesn't have anything to match that at this point. If you want super fast lenses, other than that, the Nikon lenses are great. The 1.8 is super great. They're just 1.8s, and that doesn't really do it for everybody. But hopefully, this answers some of your questions. Again, it's not the gear; it's all about um, you know just you putting your effort into the photography and getting better and better at that. But download these files, play with them on your own. All right, till next time, it's Marcus. Love you guys.